therapists are not trained to break through the stories of a woman. And because they're already biased, they already have that gender bias to believe and take on the perceptions of the woman and have that prejudice towards men. They get sucked in. What's going on, everybody? My name is Mel, and welcome to Life Coaching by Mel. Here at Life Coaching by Mel, we speak truth. I'm not talking about your truth, my truth. I'm referring to the Lord's truth. And we hear every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time with a new episode. So if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the comment section. Let me know what you think about this amazing topic that we have to have here. And the channel is growing, but I need your assistance to help the channel grow even more. So definitely share this with at least one person, but share this with everyone you know, because I believe anyone can benefit from this amazing conversation. Guys, I have a treat for you all. I have a special guest, my <laughs> newfound friend. Let's get around here by the name of Tamara. How are you doing, Tamara? <laughs> good, good. Thank now, you for you, having me now. <laughs> man, it's my absolute honor and pleasure. And if you guys don't know her yet, you about to be blown away. She's a firecracker, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but let me let you know what she says in her bio here. She says she's a wife, a mom, so she's living life, making observations. You can find her at Just Live Mara on TikTok and YouTube. Also, Tamara, if you or any other platforms, you can let the people know here, but tell the people a little bit about you. Oh, gosh, a little bit about me. Um, well, that... <laughs> My bio, I try to keep it short and sweet, you know, um, I'm all of those things. Um, I do um, work from home. So um, I am in the tech field. Um, I'm a cybersecurity analyst full time. So, yes, I talk my mess on <laughs> social media. <laughs> but, yes, um, I do have a full time job. Um, nice. <clears throat> on top of that, I just. I would I wouldn't call myself an influencer. Um, I don't necessarily need you know want to influence anybody, but I would call myself a content creator, um, and I create content to kind of create thought provoking, sometimes ruffled feathers <laughs> type <laughs> conversations. Um, and yeah, I just you know saw a need um mainly amongst women you know um and i just wanted to start speaking out you know you get to a point where you're just tired of seeing mess and you want to try to help clean up that mess if you can <laughs> so um that was a little about a little bit about me um i'm just a regular old woman that went to school has kids married and now trying to branch out in other avenues. And this happens to be one of those avenues. <laughs> so. I love it. I love it. I, I started when I started my channel. I introduced myself the same way. I'm just a regular guy. Yeah. You, know, you know, just trying to make a difference here. But I noticed something, Tamara, and I do want to. Make sure I understand that you do want me to call you Tamara. You want us to refer you as Tamara. Yes, it's so funny because I know how my name can be pronounced so many different ways. So yes, so my name is Tamara. I pronounce my uh, handle Just Live Mara, and I right. just do that as it was a reminder for myself, and it was just a reminder no matter what I go through, just live. You know, it's not going to be the end you know your end all be all you know we all go through storms we all go through trials it's about working through it keep living keep pushing so just live mara was more so a reminder for myself just to keep pushing so yeah that's to kind of explain that <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful it's definitely beautiful <laughs> now you have in your bio you said mm -hmm. wife mom mm -hmm. why did you arrange your bio that way because uh i'm very proud of those titles um, you know, it's so interesting. I feel like I knew I was a little bit different growing up because I knew in high school that, you know, how you get asked that question, like, what do you want to be in life? Or, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? You would have asked me, I could not think of one job I wanted to have, <laughs> but I knew I wanted to be a wife. I knew I wanted to have kids. And so if you ask me that question, that's what I told you. Now, as far as a job, I kind of always kind of had a knack that I would be some I would be doing something in the IT field. It's just it runs in my family. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, my main thing, I'm very family oriented and I'm very proud that I earned those titles. And yeah, those are like I think those are like probably the two most important titles that I wear. 
Um, so I think it's important too to kind of list those as the forefront because the topics that I'm talking on. Um, I think a lot of times, you know, individuals get discredit get get discredited for speaking on things, but yet they're not living a life that kind of complements what they're talking about. Um, so I got tired of people asking me too, are you married? Are you are you married? Yes, I'm married. I'm married, you know. So um, I just, but overall, it was because I wear those titles very, very proud. And I think people have now put those lower on the pedestal when really those should be at the forefront. Yeah. So <laughs> now, you know you're stepping on toes because that's very countercultural nowadays to marry. <laughs> Say I'm stepping on toes. <laughs> I mean, that's what you seem to do best now. Come I on, man. <laughs> I agree. But, I agree. And that's what your content is. It's, it's directly in your face, and I love it. Um, mm -hmm. Now, you stepped on toes of women primarily, um, mm -hmm. and single women, secondly, I would say. But <laughs> So I just want to ask, how long have you been married, and what does your husband have to say about your content? My husband is not a social media person, I'm going to be honest. He don't probably know half the stuff that I be talking about, but he know I be talking. Like, I told <laughs> him, you know, it, it, it was so funny because I told him, you know, that I wanted to do this. I told him um, what I kind of wanted to speak about. And sometimes uh, I be tapping into him. Like, you know, I will like go to him and talk to him about certain, you know, topics to kind of get a male perspective before I start running my damn mouth <laughs> and just assuming like this is how men are. I can kind of observe and kind of make sense of what's going on, but I use him as a validation based on what I've seen. Um so and he'll normally like confirm or deny and then he'll provide more insight, you know, about how I feel. I mean, about what I see. Um, and it, we and I think that's one thing about me and my husband. We have very similar um, thought process. Like we think the same. Like it's rare that we like if we're talking on a particular topic. I see he'll say exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, okay, baby, I, knew I, I knew I wasn't crazy. Like he'll kind of validate, you know, what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, I just, the content is not, you know, I don't even be trying to ruffle feathers, Mel. I don't, <laughs> that is not my intention. It's, I'm not a confrontational person by nature. You meet me in person, I giggle, I laugh all the time, but I'm just tired of people sugarcoating things. Um, I do think to a certain degree, shame needs to come back, not to the point where we want you to like, you know, have low self-esteem, but if you don't feel like you ever did anything wrong, how are you ever going to learn from anything? Mm. Um, and then this is how we're repeating, you know, toxic cycles because you're telling, you're teaching your kids every decision we made was meant to be instead of just realizing, no, this was just an individual choice that you made. Life is about choices. Um, it was meant to be because of the choice you made. Mm. Um, so we got to get in the habit of realizing we have more power than we realize. Um, and so that was just the point of my content. Like, you know, just to offer a different perspective to get people talking and to create, you know, have you sit back and think a little bit, like maybe I have been kind of looking at this a little bit wrong, you know? Um, so yeah, I just, <laughs> I don't know how else to kind of explain it, but it was just, something that I felt in my spirit like even the jobs that I've had I've always been the person that runs her mouth that has to talk I have to talk for <laughs> long periods of time um and I think this just this has just kind of fit into what I was doing already it's just a different subject um women <laughs> lord be Jesus we need help and I will say that <laughs> 10 times over um I don't know what happened I don't know how we got here I don't as much as we try to call men out, I feel like we are terrible. Um, we are grown kids and we still move off of our emotions like grown kids. And, you know, <clears throat> it's okay to feel and it's okay to have your emotions, but it's not okay to make illogical decisions based on your emotions at times. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's the other thing too. Women have to be able to learn how to decide for when they're making the, an emotional decision or when they're making a logical decision. Um and I think your emotions should balance out your logic in the sense of like compassion and understanding. Um, but I just think we just make too many impulsive decisions um, and then be surprised at the at the outcome. <laughs>
I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, I love that, that whole. You know, I feel like I feel like I'm like, hold on, we don't we ain't go based on what you feel like now. <laughs> That's a hundred percent spot on. That's amazing uh, mm-hmm. to hear you say. And of course, uh, again, like I said, it's kind of culture, but it's also just it's a risk that you're taking yeah. because mm-hmm. you know you're going to get the, the you know the flack. You're going to give you know negative yeah. feedback. So I admire you for that risk. Now I have been binge watching. Your your content, I will admit, and I okay. Came, well, I appreciate that. I don't <laughs> even know it, you know. <laughs> and I came across though you telling an amazing story of the young lady that you know kind of prompted you to start your content. Now, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you mind sharing that story with the people? Oh my gosh, this was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you know, before I started running my mouth. <laughs> on social media I was definitely it was always been in my mind to like try to work with younger girls I that I and I didn't want babies I wanted like middle school girls and I wanted high school girls like you know right when you're hitting puberty your hormones are going crazy men are just looking you know the boys are just looking very delectable you know what I'm saying like you know you're hitting that time period and it's a way to do things in a healthy manner so we lived in Baltimore it's Baltimore. And um, it was a decent, it was a a very nice school, but it was just (laughs) the environment it was in. It was, yeah, a little hood. We we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna sugarcoat. It was a little hood. Um, And so you're gonna get what you get in that environment. So um, I got asked to uh, work with the girls to do this girls run. Um, It was supposed to be during that summer. And because I I actively work out, I work out now five times out of the week. So I actively work out. They realized I worked out, which is why they even asked me to start coaching the girls. Um, And so I agreed to it. Well, then it spinned off into, well, Tamara, can you do you mind mentoring you, whatever? And there was this 12 year old girl um, who just had a baby. And, you know, one of the guiding counselors had introduced me to her. And I guess she, I'm assuming she didn't come from the best background, one, because she was 12 and she had a baby. But then, two, it was like she needed shoes. Um, even, like, the shoes that she had on that particularly, I didn't tell this piece in my in my TikTok, but it just really wasn't appropriate for the how it felt outside. It was cool outside, and they looked like fluffy slippers. Like, she didn't have real shoes on, and this is a 12-year-old that just had a baby. So that tells you all ripped. She can't afford to you know, raise a baby and whoever's taking care of her can barely afford to take care of her. Um, so <laughs> we exchanged numbers. I got introduced to her. We exchanged numbers. I was trying to see if I could have, if I had some shoes by chance that I, you know, that fit her. Um, so I tried to bring what I could, um, but I don't think any of my sizes fit her, but that's why I was like, you know, I see stuff like that. I was, you know, I'm gonna do what I can. Um, nonetheless, we exchanged numbers and I told her, you know, you know, hit me up anytime if you ever need somebody to talk to things of that nature, which she did twice. She did a couple, she did, she did twice. Um, she did reach out to me and I'll never forget the particular conversation. She was venting to me because she couldn't understand, um, why she couldn't go out and hang out with her friends and, um, how she, you know, felt like she made the best decision, you know, by having her daughter and, you know, she really wants to, you know, do the best for her daughter. But again, you know, hearing her talk and trying to convince herself, you know, that's what she wants to do with it. The conversation ended up turning her turning into she couldn't understand, though, even though she wanted to do these things and she wanted to provide these things for her child. She's a kid, you know, and she wants to be able to go outside hang with her friends and not have to worry about, you know, she wants freedom, you know, and, and that's the thing. Like when you have a baby to a sense, your freedom changes. I'm not saying it's gone, but it changes. And then it having to explain to a child how to turn the child off and the mommy on. She's not, you know, in that time frame, And so that broke my heart. That broke my heart that, you know, hearing her not really understanding what she just did. She didn't understand what she just did. She just knew having a baby 
um, is what she was supposed to do. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know if that's what she was supposed to do. That's the choice that she made. And that has now changed the course of her life, you know, because she made that decision. But I just, it don't sit right with me with a 12 year old getting pregnant. Now, I don't think it was anything like abuse. It didn't come across like that. I just think that it might have been, <laughs> you know, hormones raging. I mean, oh, it yeah. just didn't give like, you know, she was abused but that's my hood i've seen that a lot going on (laughs) exactly Exactly. and so and then too um hearing hearing uh, i met another little girl um and it was like my same my same video where we were i was walking my daughter to class and she was walking her younger sibling to class and these are both middle school girls these are both middle school girls um and this other one she was walking next to me and she noticed my workout outfit she was like oh your outfit's cute and I said well thank you and she got to talking to me and she was like yeah I have to get up and get my you know my siblings dressed and I've helped feed them and she said then I um you know take them to school and then I gotta um, make sure I get them to take them back and then she was like I'm the I can't remember how many but male I know it was about 10 or more kids and her mom had just had more had one more and the baby was maybe about eight months. So she just had the baby. And, you know, listening to her talk to me, you would have thought I was talking to another mom. So even though this little girl didn't have kids, still her childhood is being robbed because she's the co-parent. Yeah. And then your mom is still having babies. So again, like, you know, stuff like that, you know, pisses me off, you yeah. know, to no extent. Like you you're ruining these girls and you're making them operate in dysfunction and they're thinking dysfunction is normal. And this is why people think wrong is right. And right is wrong. Cause what are, what are we, what are we doing? And for women to sit here and try to act like that, you know, we're these perfect angels and we make, you know, right decisions. No, we don't always get it right. And it should be okay to say, I didn't get it right. Like, you know, Even when I brought up, you know, divorces, it was not to shame anybody that got a divorce, but it's okay to say that, you know, I we didn't succeed at it. It's okay to say we failed at it. You right. know, it, it's okay to say you didn't succeed at something. Um, and if you want to try again, try again. But next time, take the next time serious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, don't. <laughs> Because there are people that will get married four or five times. What are we doing? Because now you're treating marriage like a regular relationship. So, again, I just think our our youth is watching. And they're watching how we're moving. And they're watching the decisions that we're making. And we're treating everything like, eh, eh, you know, like it's nothing, you know, or it'll be all right. And not taking consideration, you know, what type of impact these situations have. We're seeing the outcome in live time. (laughs) <laughs> right now, <laughs> we're seeing it so yeah. i think that's part of the you know the, what sparked it it's just i've i'm seeing how it's impacting the younger girls um growing up and they deserve a better chance at life than what they're given um yeah. so so yes that's that's the story behind that <laughs> man beautiful beautiful and, and what you're talking about essentially is accountability you know yeah you created this world where you know, women don't have to face accountability, accountability at all. At all. Some point or another, you know, they can find a way out and, and be, become the victim in it. And I'm gonna be honest, that's why I tell people all the time, like I have a hard time giving money uh to a homeless woman. I'm gonna be real. You know how many bridges she gotta burn to be, to be on that street? I'm sorry. <laughs> she have she have really you know, I never looked at it like that, but that's a good point. <laughs> I mean, people are waiting and will, especially an attractive, you know, woman. But any woman, people yeah. are waiting and willing to give women, you know, a second chance. So it's yeah. hard for me to to have that sympathy or empathy. Uh, yeah. So and that kind of takes us to kind of our subject of today. Uh, okay. I found a video of a therapist who mm-hmm. says that she's been trained essentially to not take a woman's story regarding. What's going on within the marriage? Now, heads up, ladies and gentlemen, this is a little bit of a long video, but I want to let it process and, and play fully through, and we're going to give our reaction on the other end. Okay. I have been trained, <laughs> very strongly trained by my mentor, to never believe a woman's story in her marriage. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I have gotten 
into a woman's story because we are are so convincing we are so manipulative we know how to dramatize and and exaggerate the circumstances and experiences in the marriage to suck someone in to feel sorry for us to validate us in our victim story and have have even really no awareness to question that story from a woman and and try to understand well what what would the the husband say or what what's his experience so what's his side of the story and we bring that into therapy so i like i said i can't tell you how many times over 10 years that i got sucked into a woman's story and my mentor had to help me break through my cognitive dissonance and get back to the fundamental truth that I know I've gotten so much better. It's very rare that that happens now, but it can still happen because we are so convincing. It would, it's just like, it would almost be blasphemy to not believe some of the things a woman says. And oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You have to, that's terrible. Maybe he's not a good man. We are so convincing. And I have also had the pleasure over the years where I've worked with a woman. She has a, a strong story of her husband and how he can be aggressive or controlling and a narcissist. And she paints this story. And then I've had the pleasure to actually meet her husband because she's tried to, you know, we, we always want our husbands to change. So it's interesting. Women will convince their husbands to, to take my men's course which is interesting because of what I teach men in that course, which is about all our woman ways and how men have to take their power back. But I, I've met these husbands and it's, I meet them and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she has, has the story of this man because they're, they're the typical good man, just loves their wife, is caring, is confused about how they're always wrong and can't be right. And when I meet the husband, it doesn't add up at all with the woman's story of him. So therapists are not trained to break through the stories of a woman. And because they're already biased, they already have that gender bias to believe and take on the perceptions of the woman and have that prejudice towards men, they get sucked in. And, and here's the thing, is that the very same tactics we use as women in a marriage to manipulate our husbands and brainwash them to believe they are the problem are the same manipulative tactics that we use to draw a therapist into our story and get the therapist on our side. We're using the same tactics and then the therapist gets brainwashed into believing the man is the problem. I've had several female clients over the years who very quickly trusted me because I didn't buy into their stories and I called them out on it. I have one client in particular, I will never forget my first conversation with her. She reached out to me. She had this big story about her husband. He never pays me any attention. He doesn't validate me. Um, he he doesn't even compliment me ever. I don't, he never even says, I love you. And she had this whole story, but she was also sharing, you know, but I know I have these behaviors and this is how I show up. And this is, was a very, uh, is a very high powered woman with a very successful business. And she gets done telling her story. And I, I knew I had to be totally direct with her to gain her trust, to gain her respect. And I told her point blank, the problem is, your husband is terrified of you because you are such, pardon my language, because you are such a bitch. And I didn't mean it mean, and I didn't mean it judgmentally. I was just telling it to her straight and also knowing the own experience of myself as a woman and the women that I had worked with. And her jaw dropped open <laughs> and I didn't know what was gonna come out next. <laughs> but she just looked at me and she said, thank you. You're a hundred percent correct. She said, I've never, ever had a therapist ever be direct with me and has always let it, let me manipulate them. You're the first person who's called me out. So we have to be called out women and we have to see what's really going on. And
And if they're a couples counselor, isn't going to do that because they're already trained to believe our story. Oh, <laughs> man, I want your reaction to Mary, but let me, let me just say this real quick. Cause it just took me back to the days of my youth. Cause I don't know if you heard me talk about my mom at all. And you know, I'm not here to bash or anything like that, but I will say my mom is completely a tough person to live with. So, <laughs> So growing up, we used to always say, like, mama need, mama need therapy. Like a lot of us <laughs> would say that. Mama just needs some therapy. Uh -huh. So she finally started going, like when I was around 16, 17 or whatever. I think she still go to this day. I'm not sure, if, but Aww. I think so. But I promise you, Tamara, every time she went, she came back worse. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she came back every single time with instructions from the therapist on how we need to get better. Like... <laughs> <laughs> the things we need to do. I'm like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> I'd be so confused. But now, hearing this yeah, lady, like, hearing this therapist, it all makes sense. Yep. She manipulated that, that whoever the therapist was every single time. She had to. Because <laughs> ain't no way the therapist can sit there and, you know, <laughs> and not see this lady crazy and not know that we've we been tortured. So I got firsthand experience that this is true. But anyway. <laughs> I want to get your reaction. Getting worse. <laughs> yes, every single time. Like, how she come back with more power? I mean, it's just like, <laughs> like she got charged up. And... <laughs> like she got charged up. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> she doubled down and on and all this stuff, man. I'm like, what's going on? But anyway, what is your reaction to that, Tamara? Uh, I believe it. <laughs> I mean, okay. I mean, first of all. You sending, you sending me that video came right on time because with my posts that I've been making and you know male, not one woman in them, they don't ever hold themselves accountable. I mean everyone that talks about their failed relationships or issues in their relationships the woman never admits her fault. She never says anything that she did wrong. Okay. Even if the man cheated, you didn't do nothing. <laughs> like you, you was a perfect little angel the entire time. Like I'm not saying, you know, to excuse cheating. That's not what I'm saying. But let's get in the habit of admitting when we mess up. Period. You know. And I think that's the problem. Um, and she's right. Like. Even in my comments, women give emotional responses. They're adding all of this extra fluff, you know, to explaining why they make the decisions that they make and why they're doing the things that they're doing. And then you're like, oh, my God. Oh, you poor. And it's really just a bunch of madness. <laughs> and, you know, just to make herself feel validated for making a decision that was really all about her and acting like she's just a victim. And I'm like, women have... Lord, Lord forgive me because I already made a video about this. Okay. <laughs> and I know we talk about Karen's. Okay. But I just think the victim mentality is just rampant in women. Mm. I mean, it, it's not really a race thing, it's just in us. You know, we have the ability <laughs> to play victim. And it doesn't matter if you're black, you're white, you're Asian, you know. Hispanic. It don't matter. You know, we, we have the capacity to do that. And we do that, you know, and we, you, women are very good manipulators and finessers and, um, and we'll use that to our advantage, but we won't admit that we doing it, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> and like she, she holds some, she holds a lot of weight and, and that's why I was like, you even got to be careful with therapists because if you're going to a therapist and you're not really seeing any improvement, and then how can that, uh, how can a therapist make that assessment? And she hasn't even met the husband. And you know, how many times do you ever ask the husband, oh, what's his story? When you never, Every woman that complained about her man, I want to talk to your. I don't want to talk to your ex. I want to know <laughs> what happened. You know what he, what he experienced. Not to say your experience is not true, but I want to hear what he said. I want to know what happened. What's his view or whatever? What can? How can you do better or whatever? So again, women are very good manipulators, and I will. I'll admit that they're very good at playing victim. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, I, 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 you know, I don't mean to make this an echo chamber, but amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll have to agree wholeheartedly. Now, I want to play, play devil's advocate here. Okay. Because I like to be fair. Okay. There's someone in the comment section or someone thinking that's watching this right now. Hey, Tamara, you're a woman too. Mm -hmm. You know, does this mean that this is true for you? Oh, what yeah. You well, no, I think um, I've had to grow. Like, you know, <laughs> where I'm at now in life, I wasn't always here. Now, I'm not <laughs> saying that, you know, I was just out here manipulating men. No, I, I've always had good intentions. I've always moved um typically with good intentions but i'm not going to sit here and act like well, i mean i probably even do it with my husband but that's my husband you know <laughs> you know like your wife you know she know how to finesse you to a certain degree you know 100 percent. <laughs> but i think there's a difference between toxic finessing meaning like you know you're only doing it just to get and you're not giving um so, yeah, I think it is a capability that women naturally come with, but I think it's all about how you use it. And I do think it's a useful tool at times um, in the appropriate setting. But like even, you know, like I said, I probably tend to use it on my husband. I'm not going to lie, but it's normally because I reciprocate what he gives me um, and he don't. And it's not like pulling teeth when I do it. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, even though it, it, I wouldn't even call it finessing, I just feel like, you know, he naturally kind of brings out that uh I wish you want to call it, that femininity you know that you know when you're when a voice get like babe can you uh babe you know <laughs> 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 like it's almost like a submissive type finesse you know what I'm saying it's just like damsel in distress type finesse like you know, <laughs> right <laughs> You know, let your man be a man, you know, to a certain degree. So I think there is healthy finessing. I think there is toxic finessing. And I just think it's really about intent. And I just think if all women kind of knew how to tap into it in an appropriate manner, yeah, it won't be hard to, you know, get a man and keep one and use it appropriately and make sure you're giving what you are requesting. You know, that's where we fall short. We don't give what we're asking for. Yeah. So yes, we do be doing that. <laughs> and, and you completely spot on. I um, mean, my wife finessed me at least once a day. Uh, I will say that. <laughs> but you spot on because you said the reciprocity thing. Like at the end of the day, she gives me way more than what I feel for finesse throughout the day. You know. You don't feel used, right? Hundred yeah, percent. You don't feel used, and it almost kind of. I feel like y'all almost kind of get a rise a little bit when we do that. It just. <laughs> hundred <laughs> percent. Like and I mean, like, y'all like to feel needed. Y'all like mm -hmm. to, I think to a certain degree, y'all find comfort in knowing that we can come to you and, you know, make certain requests and ask for certain things. So, and like I said, it goes both ways. It shouldn't, a woman should never make you feel like she's just using you. You should never feel like a, like a tool. Um, and I think that's how women have now gotten to a point with men they only look at them as a resource and not you know them as a human being and mm. that's the disconnect so yeah <laughs> that's, that's some good stuff right there i want to ask you this um what do you believe it does for a woman uh to be believed by a therapist or do to be believed by someone when she, that particular woman knows that she's lying what do you think it does for her validation Women need validation. They need to feel validated that what they did was correct. Because I feel like a lot of times they're insecure about their with their decisions and their insecurity shows when somebody tries to throw a different perspective um, or makes them kind of reassess the choice they made, you know? Um, so, yeah, I just think, I just think it just depends on their ability to women have a hard time comprehending males, so I don't. <laughs> I'm comprehending, right. um, but yeah, I just think women get more so triggered when it it directly makes them question some of the decisions that they're making. I think I think women intentionally don't want to come across as the bad guy, but they don't realize that their emotional decision-making 
tends to make them into villainous women um, at times. I mean, again, sometimes I've, and I've told my, I've been like this for, I've been like this for years, man. And I've told my friends, I don't know how many times, sometimes you got to tell your heart to shut up and, <laughs> and, and just because your heart will sometimes will steer you wrong. Um, and I think emotions balance out at times, like I said, your thoughts, but, Logic has to be over emotion sometimes um, in certain decisions. And women don't know how to do that. They think their emotional decision-making is them thinking logically. And it's not. It's not. Um, but women don't like anything that directly uh, challenges their thought process. Mm. I think I answered your question. You most <laughs> definitely did. You okay. most definitely did. <laughs> and you're spot on when it, regarding the heart issue because... I've heard someone say before, you don't follow your heart, you lead your heart, you okay. know, and more often than not, love is more of a logical decision. You know, people yes. try to make it straight emotions, but, you know, you pick and choose who you, you love. People say, you can't help who you fall in love with. Okay. How many people in your inbox right now that you just, you know, giving a shot, you know, go ahead, <laughs> go ahead. you know, you picking, you know, <laughs> you choosing. You're choosing. You're choosing. <laughs> and, and, and that's what kids, when people tell me about, you judging, you judging. Well, don't you judge when you pick a party? Like, <laughs> what is the difference? We all judge. This is how you. This judging is a is a protection mechanism to a certain degree, Absolutely. and a lot of y'all suck at it. <laughs> I mean, you suck at it. I mean, and that's just to be frank. And you know, judging is a part of life. Judging is how you um, decipher how to move in certain situations. How to what people to deal with, what businesses to work with. You're judging all the, that is a, a tool that you exercise all the time, all the time. Um, you're always judging something. And I think to tell people that like, you shouldn't be judging. No, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> you know, and, and, and so, and you need to be probably doing more of what I'm doing. So again, um, I just think, yeah, people just, are so concerned about being ashamed. Well, stop making shameful decisions. Hmm. Stop making shameful decisions if you don't want to be ashamed. Wow. And I feel like, why is it so hard to do what's do what is morally right? I, I just think I've been through so many <laughs> decisions that have impacted me emotionally that I've had to learn to tell my heart to shut up when I think it was probably at its lowest point, you know, a couple times. And I think as a woman trying to work through that, you know, I can see why it's difficult. I've dealt with heartbreak. I've dealt with, you know, traumatic experiences that really put me at my lowest. And yeah, you want to, I can say as a woman, you want to act on impulse. You want to act off those emotions because they, I mean, they come full force. So having the ability to mentally, <laughs> control that you know it's difficult at times and that it takes practice it definitely takes practice so i can't say that i've always been this level-headed to marry i'm gonna tell you i used to be a hothead male my husband could tell you i used to be terrible <laughs> um <laughs> yeah, and, and that's just real i used to be i wouldn't say i was out here bashing men but i wasn't the most healthy i wasn't the most healed um i didn't treat him the best you know at times and um, and that's just real. And it, it took his patience <laughs> to kind of like, you know, okay, okay, you know, let me call, let me call, let me sit my down, you know. And so again, it just, and that's why I'm like, women don't be finding the right guy because the right guy will just bring you from here to like, hey, okay, let me. And women don't like to feel like they are the one that has to change, or like they don't want to feel like they man is. I don't want to say better than them, but uh, much more mature, you know, yeah. um, than them. Women have a problem with feeling like they man is more mature than them. They're always going to make it seem like he's childish. When do you ever mm -hmm. woman say, hear a woman say that she's childish or no, he's childish or he acting like a little boy? You know, you hear those terms. No, we act like toddlers. So, okay. <laughs> well, they <laughs> say they say once you're trying to hold them accountable, once you say, you know, so why'd you do that? Oh, I was young. <laughs> okay, but and then, no, but, but why you have so many? I was just young. Well, you weren't too young to be sitting here just throwing it back like you were. <laughs> when does the age appropriate apply? Okay, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out 
something. You was too young to make smart decisions, but you wasn't too young to, you know, <laughs> right. make very adult decisions. So, <laughs> again, like women use, they like to sugarcoat things and they want to play victim. Like, sis, 20 something, you an adult. I mean, yeah, you allowed to make dumb decisions at times when you, you that's when you're supposed to be making dumb decisions, but don't make decisions that are just going to completely, what's the best way to limit? your free will to a certain degree. Um, there are decisions and we're not going to see her at like there's certain decisions that you can make that can impact your free will. And let's just be real. Um, so if you want to be able to move limitlessly and think about, you know, if you think about what you want in life, people don't plan anything. They're just flying by the seat of their pants. And when you fly flying by the seat of your pants, and you're not planning anything and you're moving recklessly. You're going to mess up your life. And I'm not going to sit here. You got to kind of be strategic in your 20s to a certain degree. You're learning, but I need you to be strategic. Um, but women are terrible, male. I'm not going to lie. We, we are <laughs> terrible. And I've been knowing this for years. We are terrible. Um, I was terrible. Um, and so that's why, you know, I can, when people are like, you shouldn't be judging me. No, yes, I can. Because I used to kind of act like y'all. I used to think like y'all. Uh, and I had to get out of that mindset. Um, I used to think that I could fight a man. I learned very quickly that I couldn't. Um, you know, it's just this women empowerment hypes you up so much to think that you can do what a man does. You can fight a man. You can beat him up, and you can no, no, you can't. You know, so and uh, women tend to fight with their words, and so that's why you know you'll hear you'll hear men say that women can get real nasty. Because we can't physically beat y'all. So the only way that we can really knock y'all down is by saying some slick stuff. And typically, it works. I mean, like, you know, married men, it's like, I feel like, well, men in general that are in relationships, no, I don't feel like any woman can do that. But your woman can. Mm -hmm. Your woman can say that one thing that would just set you off, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but, and then that's, again, you know, we fight where we know we can fight. Um... And so, and I think too, the assumption is, is that men, it's like, we know men can't do anything. You know, if we were, you know, women kind of get away with a lot of things, you know, even when they say like men are abusive, well, sis, we can be abusive too. And you kind of get away with it because you know, as a man, he not going to hit you back, yeah. you know, to a certain degree. Um, and, you know, men are not going to sit here and run and tell when that you know if their woman is being abusive i said y'all sit here and quote all these numbers of men abusing women but men are not running to the police department telling on y'all you know what i'm saying yeah. they're not telling on y'all so again when you throw stats at me I, and this is why I, I have a love and hate relationship with stats because you're always going to find numbers that back up your story Okay, and I and I do think, you know, it's only taking a small percentage of the whole. And if you notice in my um, videos, I hardly ever use statistics because, again, I just have a love hate relationship with it. Also, I don't really want to talk about topics that cater just to our black community because I just feel like it's a man and woman problem. I don't want to just limit myself just to the black community. Yes, I'm a, I'm, I, I love my people. But I want to be able to provide messages that can apply to no if you're a man or a woman. OK, that's, <laughs> you know, what I care about. So, right. again, I think we have a people problem um, and I just think we need more women are scared. We're scared to speak up. But I'm not going to mail. It took me years to kind of get the nerve to get to this point to, mm. to talk to women because women are mean. I've even, you know, dealing with like female friendships. Women are mean. I have lost so many friends, you know, over the years because of the way I think. I've been talking like this for years. Maybe not as, you know, way I'm throwing it out there now, but I'll make posts here and there. And my friend, my friends were just dropping. They were just mm -hmm. dropping. Um, so I, I knew I thought different. I moved a little bit different. And I know how women are. I, <laughs> I know how women are. And a lot of stuff that y'all complain about, I validate because I see it. You know, I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Matter of fact, I don't know if you watched the club Shay Shay, Monique. I have, um, I watched one clip. I haven't got through the full thing yet. Yeah. Yeah, I'm halfway through. Okay. You're going to have to watch that. And we're going to talk about that too. But, yeah. uh, cause she touches on some points and I think it would kind of add, cause I was like, Ooh, I'm going to say this as a clip. <laughs> <laughs> 
because <laughs> she's dropping gems too. And you know, and it's really about telling the truth. People don't like telling the truth, and because people don't, they have a hard time receiving it or whatever. And people like to make their own truths, is what I've learned. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just taking me time to get to this point. It's taking me time to build the tough, you know, skin enough to be able to deal with these hyenas that be out here. Um, <laughs> Cause I know I'm going to say something that's going to ruffle their feathers and to bring, go back to that video. It was like, if women don't start holding themselves accountable and just, even if your man cheated, let's just say you nagged him all the time. Like there's just certain, or you didn't really, um, check in with him you wanted him to check in with you all the time you was just you know or maybe you didn't clean up enough or maybe you maybe it might have been basic stuff there has to be something that you could have changed in that relationship that you don't want to carry over in your new relationship yeah. so the goal is is not to repeat so even if your man cheated or you know whatever again look what drew you to that type of man if a man is beating on you what drew you to, to that type of man what signs did you miss where's your discernment like, <clears throat> I knew I was different male when I met friends. And tell me to shut up when you need me to shut up. No, keep like going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew I was a little different when I would meet some of my um, female friends, you know, significant others. I remember over the years, like, like my early 20s, and man, I would look at these men <laughs> and I would be like, why? <laughs> why? Like, he looked like a walking red flag. And you attracted to him. Mm. And you really about to do this. And so, so for women to say that they're missing these signs, Mel, I could just look at their man and tell like, oh, no, I would never. <laughs> <laughs> I would never. And so, again, either they're ignoring them or that's what you like. Because I just don't understand how y'all, how not but women, you know, miss, you know, certain signs. And they all have the same story. I, I, I honestly, I honestly feel Kevin Samuels on this one. <laughs> I got so tired of hearing he was cheating and he was abusive, and um, a lot of times too was interesting to play devil's advocate. And I know I'm probably going to get some flack for this one. Um, when women always claim that their man was abusive or they was beating them, and though there are stories that I'm, you know, there's some legit legitimacy to that. But ladies, let's not add light. <laughs> Y'all don't be pushing these men. OK, if you keep poking the bear, you know, the bear going to eventually poke back. And I just think, you know, a lot of times we don't admit that we're agitators um, <clears throat> regardless. And I don't think yeah, him putting his hands on you is right. But you agitating him isn't right either because, you know, his triggers. Yeah. Um, so, again, we have to hold ourselves accountable um, yes, in regards to that. So. Okay, go ahead, Neil, because I feel like I'm doing <laughs> I feel like doing a standing ovation. <laughs> no, you're 100 percent spot on. I think that's what that's what the lady is saying, the therapist is saying. I mean, yep. Yep. Um, there's more to the story. Essentially, that's what it's that's what it's saying. And uh, you know, I got this whole saying, you know, believe all women. That started with the me me too movement and stuff. And I was mm -hmm. like, I don't love them. You know, I was just like the whole time I was sitting there, like, hold on now. <laughs> now you say all love. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I mean, we do know. I mean, like women know, like you said in your own, uh, uh -huh. what you were saying there. Just women know. Women lie. I mean, you lie against your friends. So why would you believe all women? And then we just Correct. created this whole atmosphere in our culture now that women hate. Like women hate the fact that men are afraid to come holler at them. You know, <laughs> rather be in the inbox all day instead of talk. You know, face to face. Y'all well, can't even ask them to smile. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, man, this is like. I gotta smile. <laughs> you that I'm happy. Well, are you happy? Exactly. What? If you're happy, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you ain't happy, sis. <laughs> the mad don't be mad. Then that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I agree with you, man. I just. <laughs> <laughs> We just so backwards. You can't. A lot of women. A lot of women are not approachable. They're mm. not approachable, um, and they make it that way. That's like they're annoyed that men are going to naturally gravitate you if you were an attractive woman. You're going to get that. And I understand that sometimes comes with its annoyances, but there are some women that completely complain that they don't get any attention. So again, 
pick one. You even had what was her Steph Curry's wife? What's her name? Aisha. Aisha. She married to a whole basketball player, and she's feeling like she's not getting enough attention. So again, <laughs> like money don't even buy happiness. At all. You, got a top, you got a top NBA player, you still not feeling like you're not getting enough validation. So Oh, so I just feel like that just shows you women are never satisfied. They're never satisfied. And that's why men should never try to satisfy. Ever. Don't even don't get on that train. <laughs> we are never satisfied. Yes. Speaking of that, that's a, almost a great segue to. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about, are you talking about the story? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> you were reached out. Oh, a guy reached out to you, a fan of yours. Uh, I reached out to you and. Uh, wanted you to, to kind of address his situation he has going on. And so if you have that up, I would like you to actually introduce it and, you know, read it and, and we can oh, respond gosh. to that. Okay. Let me get it up. Let me get it up. <laughs> it's uh, okay. Y'all. Okay. So bear with me. He did not really use the best uh, punctuation and stuff, but uh, we're going to work through this. <laughs> okay. Good. So this was yeah a story that um, a guy reached out to me. It was his story and he wanted our take um on the situation and well he reached out to me one of my take i wanted a male perspective to add to the take and once i read the story y'all will understand why uh so we're gonna go with it <laughs> so um i'm just gonna start with um i want to ask your take on a situation i'm trying to stay private with this but i just got out of a marriage of five years together for eight she left me for another man I was homeless for two years. She left me with all the bills and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis prior to this. I tried to hold down all of the bills alone, but I couldn't. So I was ejected from the home. My kids was taken away. Um, I didn't know where they were. And then I was homeless. After two years, I met someone. They looked out for me and let me come into their home. I appreciate it so much. But as some time went on, they started to belittle me. And tell me things like, I see why your ex left. You just see why your ex left you just because I don't have the finances I used to have. I'm trying to get it back. I'm still homeless at the time. Um, I am not in my home. I hear that a lot, but I'm paying half the rent. This woman that I am with now is very masculine. She feels the need to dominate over me in everything. She doesn't listen. She over talks. It's never a time where she would just back down and let me handle things. I get disrespected in front of her kids and her friend. She has to be dominant. It is very sickening to me. I lost everything. And this person knew this when they met me, but feels the need to throw it in my face and the things I went through with my ex-wife. I can't even change the oil on her truck without her dominating over the over that. She thinks that I don't know how to do anything. I just feel she should sit down and let a man be a man sometimes and she be a woman and get out of the way or just be quiet. <laughs> Could you do a video on this to help me out? I would love to hear your take on this. <laughs> now, Mel, I read. I want you to give your take first. You man, so go ahead and get your platform. Uh, go ahead, Mel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> first off, brother, I want to say I love you. And everything I'm about to say is out of love. Uh, I feel horrible that you're in that situation or before you. A lot of things that are out of your control. But I want to ask you what things are in your control. Uh, I want to ask you, when was the last time you had control of your life? It sounds like things are happening to you instead of you making life happen. Mm -hmm. uh, life has been hard on you. Life has been difficult. However, there are so many more things in your control. And it sounds like you're just an innocent bystander. Just allowing mm -hmm. things to happen to you. Mm -hmm. It's time to get up. At this point, my brother, it's time to get up. I need you to release yourself from the victim mentality. Mm -hmm. You're not a victim. Mm -hmm. You're a victor. You have everything within your power to correct your situation. Put your dukes up, my man. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's time to fight, man. It's time mm -hmm. to fight. Do everything in your power to make things better and then leave everything else up to God. I want to say about those women. Now, you got two separate relationships, two separate women, two separate groups of children with the same disrespect. 
Who's the common denominator in that? Mm. It's you. You are the common denominator. People only treat us how we allow people to treat us. People only respect you based on the way that you carry yourself. So everything you are receiving is based on what you are presenting. Mm -hmm. They are determining who's the alpha in each of those situations. Mm -hmm. so you're basically having a pissing contest. Same thing. When my dog goes to the dog park. Every time he gets around other dogs, he starts lifting their leg up and trying to show everybody this is my territory. Really? And essentially, that's what those women have done to you. Yeah. They're showing you who's boss. Because you aren't. There's no mm -hmm. way that a, a, a masculine woman cannot exist, cannot survive in the presence of a masculine man. Mm -hmm. They wither. Mm -hmm. They go away. Mm -hmm. They can't exist. So I ask you to, to think about this, brother. The words those women, those women are saying I'm sure it hurts tremendously. It's harsh. Tremendously harsh, man. However, as harsh, it, as harsh as it may be, what if that is the Lord speaking directly through those women to you mm -hmm. and trying to give you a spiritual awakening? I know it sounds weird, but honestly, I believe that's what's going on. Those women are speaking to you blunt bluntly because God is trying to wake you up. There's a reason that you came across Tamara's content. Because, yeah, she's speaking from a woman's perspective. However, this is spiritual awakening that's happening for you, man. You've been exposed to different thoughts. You've been exposed to the way a woman should deal with a man. And this, you've been exposed to what you deserve and what you can earn on the other side of you conquering what the battle that you're going through right now. But at the end of the day, man, you got to know who you are. You're a mighty man of valor. And what God is doing is speaking through those women to speak to the little boy in you or the whatever the warrior is inside of you that's left. It's time for you to tap into that warrior and grasp the man that you are. It's a Hebrew word I love to talk about called kazak. What that word means is show yourself a man. Be strong and very courageous. I need you to tap into that Kazakh power. Release that warrior inside of you. You can do this. All right, ma'am. Look at your words of encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> you better up. You better up. <laughs> that man. Now, uh, it's so interesting that, you know, he asked for my take. Um, especially from a, you know, just from a woman's perspective and I wanted to be fair and I wanted him to hear from a man, you know, I guess recognizing some of the things that, you know, he could probably clean up, you know, on his side. Um, and I think one of the interesting lines that stuck out to me that he said was, I just feel she should sit down and let me be a man sometimes and she be a woman and get out of the way uh i think one of the the issues is is she you feel like that but she treats you like that because you're not in you know and i guess in a healthy partnership the expectation is the man is typically the provider we we get that but you're currently not right now in that provider role right now. And it sounds right. like it's always a risk for a man, in my opinion, to move in with a woman. Um, Cause it's almost like you're now doing that child parent relationship. So she's treating you like one of her kids, yeah. you know, essentially, you know, you, you, you claim that she not letting you do anything. Well, could, hey, that sounds like how you would do a child. You know, you just don't trust them enough to do, you know, certain tasks. And I think from a female perspective, those women just don't have that. They don't have that sense of security um, to know that he can handle certain things. And this is not to knock, you know, knock you down anything. Yeah. But it's just from a woman, from a woman's perspective, you look to a man to take care of you, to look out for you. Um, and right now he's in a stance where he can't. Um, the other thing from a woman's perspective that um, I kind of took away is that, you know, he's currently living with this woman and her kids, but his kids got taken away. You know, I understand that you're trying to date, but honestly, is that the right thing you need to be doing right now? 
Um, I mean, honestly, I feel like as a man that has children of his own, you should be at least right now trying to get on your feet to get your own place so that yeah. your kids can kind of come, can come spend time with you. Um, I just think things are a little lopsided. Um, and I think when it's lopsided like this, um, this is the outcome. You're not getting the respect. No, women are not supposed to treat every man, you know, the way I describe. There is a certain type of man that deserves these things. And I think men also have to recognize their shortcomings. I mean, yes, I talk about women, you know, and their shortcomings. But again, this is on the notion that you have a good man and he's giving you this sense of security and he's doing what he's supposed to do. Yeah. And right now, you're in a state where you can't really give that right now. And that's okay. You know, <laughs> we all hit trials. Okay. Yeah. We've all been there. Um, but I just think your, your priorities are not aligned. Um, I don't think you, you should be moving in these with these women. And I think you probably need to make it a point to work on getting your own stuff. So you don't have to worry about how somebody treats you so yeah. that you can, you know, work on building a relationship with your children. Um, but yeah, I just think, you know, you want to be treated out of, like a man, but you have to exude that. You have to present that, um, in a way to where a woman is willing to support you and cater to you, um, in that manner. So yeah. I just think you're in a transition period. You're in a, in a, in a sense of awakening and you're looking for direction and guidance. And I think right now, it's important for you to have your own. You need to be working on building your own, um, yeah. essentially. Yeah. So that's my take on that. And I want to tell them congratulations, man. Uh, I think God, or well, somewhere or another, you were rescued from a horrible mm -hmm. marriage. And you, you know, mm -hmm. not celebrating divorce, but I'm definitely pointing out that she left you, she got rid of you. So mm -hmm. she sounds like a horrible person. Congratulations on that. And it sounds like God's giving you a warning of a potentially. <laughs> You are in another bad relationship and trying to avoid another bad marriage. So, congratulations! You got your warning. Your power. <laughs> Perspective. Perspective. <laughs> I mean, get out of there, brother. I mean, come on, man. I agree to, with Tamara hundred percent. Honestly, this is the time period for you to fully focus on yourself, and it's kind of a, a, a what they call it a, a mulligan, almost like you. Mm -hmm. Of course, you want to build and finally get back to the opportunity to get your kids and everything. But mm -hmm. if you don't have an opportunity to be in your kid's life right now, I'm not sure if that's affecting you financially or not. And you don't you don't have you have an opportunity if you break up with this crazy lady, you can get uh, <laughs> a fresh slate <laughs> where you can fully build yourself up without any fin other financial, you know, uh, hindrances, man. It's mm -hmm. your opportunity. And, and honestly, this, this mirrors my situation. Uh, well, my, I don't know if you know Tamara, this is my second marriage. So I was previously divorced and, you know, homeless as well for about a two to three week period and had to build myself up from the ground up. So I, if I know that God did it for me, he could definitely do it for you. But it took me totally exiting away from everyone else. Oh, and fully told to go straight to you with this story. I don't know what it was. And for him to reach out to me the day before, this was yesterday, right before I was yes. getting ready to talk to you. Yes. That is crazy. You. So this you. is your, your second marriage. This is like his second situation. Yep. You experience homelessness. He and when you and when you lose it all by the hands of another of, of hands of another person, especially your ex wife, you put yourself when you build yourself back up. One uh -huh. thing you never gonna do is move let it happen another one. <laughs> <laughs> No, that it was a that was a very strong conversation my wife and I had uh, okay. prior to prior to engagement. Like, look, I ain't moving in with you. I'm just sorry. Right. I mean, I know you right. in this you in this high rise apartment in the middle of downtown Dallas, but I don't care. But that showed me who I had. I had a real ride yeah. or die, and yeah. she and she she dropped all that and moved in with me. So wow, that's amazing. The point is, I was secure. And yeah. I never and I never went into a relationship saying everybody I dated at that time, I told them, look, I would like to be with you, but you know, I want you, but I don't need you. Right. Cause I have my right. own. And, right. Uh, so I'm self-sufficient. So at the end of the day, that's that's what really this time period is for you. And man, 
You and bro, this was this was divine alignment. I didn't know all of this about Mel when I asked him <laughs> to read your story. So this was perfect. <laughs> God, I, was, I don't even know what made me ask you. Okay, <laughs> I was like, uh, uh-uh, I just feel like Mel just. I ain't even talked to Mel that well, but like, I just feel like he get the energy. Like he would just really like give him what he need, and I think you were the perfect person to speak on it with your yeah, I history. It. I appreciate. Ah! it. I but love no, divine alignment. <laughs> me too. I 100 percent do. But I'm gonna say this last thing here and we can wrap it up. Okay. It sounds like as well, brother, that you have completely devalued yourself mm. to the point that pain, whether that be physical, but also emotional and relational pain, is what you now are accustomed to. Where it's even if you were to get out of this, you very well may be missing that pain. And it may be why you are putting up with this person who treated you the exact same way as the previous person, because pain is what familiar, is familiar for, for you. Rejection is what is now familiar for you. And I'm asking you, if you really want to get beyond that, you know the answers. Like before you sent this message to Tamara, you knew the answer. You knew what you should choose beyond what you're choosing now. And pain has to be, <laughs> has to exit this situation. And you have to choose life. I encourage you to fully release this over to the Lord and listen to the Holy Spirit. And he's going to guide you right out of this situation. But you knew that already. Tamara, this has been an amazing conversation. <laughs> I'm talking about hopefully this is the first of many. Yes, uh, yes, yes. What I want you to do now is... <laughs> uh, <laughs> what I want you to do now is, is plug anything you would like to plug, but also... Give us your final words. Just anything you would like to say to wrap us up here. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, one, Mel, thank you. Um, thank you so much for sharing your platform. And to your wife, I also said thank you because she is um, allowing, she's sharing her husband, you know, with the world and, yeah. you, know, get, you know, with me, giving the opportunity to use your platform. And, um I just appreciate what you're doing and I just want us to do better as a people. Um, And I just want us to look at each other as human beings. And I mean, yeah, there is so many societal standards that, you know, go on people, but we have to be able to just remember that we're all human. We're all having this life experience and life be life. And so I just think we need to show a little bit more empathy and compassion. yeah, I just appreciate you, Mel. I, I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my honor, Tamara. Hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much for coming on. Let's go.